What's going on, you guys? So I'm here at the Henderson Regionals. My boy, what's your name, bro? Brandon Wong. And what did you do? I got eighth place, squeaked in X2 at the regional. I mean, there was no X11 somehow. I don't know. I had the best tiebreakers. Playing which goo? I played BA Infernoid, and I played Whoa. it because it's pretty good at going second compared to a lot of things in this format because it has no normal sun restriction, and it can play Twister. And the only real bad matchup is like Metal Foes, you know? That's my only like thing I ever worry about. Uh, DD Crow is good against a lot of decks right now, so. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, let's see what you played. Um, played two Max C. I'm putting it first because it's literally like the best card in the game. Like I'm looking, I'm looking forward to uh, the new card, the Ghost Dash card, because it can negate this card. This card is like overbearingly powerful. Like you should be playing two in every single deck. There's no deck I wouldn't play two in. Uh, tour guide because it's like the searchable super play. Like you make a lot of levers and Dantes with this thing after your turn one beaters. It's really good. Obvious. Three tear top. Auto broken. Tops. Play ulti so you draw. Play ulti so you draw with, draw the, more. with the tour guide. Yeah. Edinburgh standard. Um, the dice because it's a tuner for D berry so I can like search it with tear top to get that and then I don't lose the D berry anymore. I play a couple synchros that are like six so. And I can attribute. Uh, there's another part I'll talk about with this. Um, Graph, Seer, best ones, Skarm, other best one. Just because Torgai is the best one. Farfa, other best one. They're all the best one. <laughs> Except these ones. These ones aren't as good. I play Libic. I mean, Libic, Rubik. This is for D Barrier 2. This is for um, some, like, Windmore ish kind of plays. But it's good game one. Just as another name. I side it out a lot. This too, sometimes. It just depends on what they're playing, you know. Uh, play three rhinos. It's like the bridge of the deck. I can get this with Torgai and then mill Infernoids, or I could mill this with Dante naturally, you know, and just mill any Infernoid I need. So basically, it makes milling so much better in this deck, and you can use that as level three for your Dante too. Uh, for Infernoids, I play three Decatrons, best one. Uh, copies any of them basically, and it's a tuner, so D barrier. Again, fuck that card. Um, Mantra, I play one because you can make him into a level three, and that goes into this play I'm talking about here. I got Armadic, I played two. I used to play three, but I just play two now because of uh, tech choice I made today. But you use this and Decatron, you can make um, a Dante with that. It's all Melbic and Dante. Dante's everything. Uh, one Patrulia, you can use it to make Omega, it pop spell traps, so it's like a must have one of. I wouldn't play any more though. Two sets of miss, it's the best big one because it doesn't cost as much as the other ones, and it can do uh, DD Crow on either player's turn, so it's really relevant to attribute my own monsters so I have enough level to summon more stuff. So, like, I do Decatron into this a lot, so I want to make sure I have one in my deck. Uh, one Devady, one Onanku, you just get them when you need them. They're really, really good, though, especially this card. Like, Heavy Storming is really good. And I main decked two Ghost Ogres. It's really good right now because of DDDs and Metal Foes, and like I said, I worry a lot about Metal Foes, so that's good for them. And it has marginal use in other matchups. Like, you could hit a Dante maybe in that they're further from Beatrice now, or you could like hit, um, what's it called? Like an ABC Dragon on their turn when they try to banish your shit, you know? Other stuff too. Oh, what, you playing Maxine and Mean Deck? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was the first card I saw. It's the best he card. It, yeah, best oh, card. Yeah. Three Twisters, yep. another best card. It, like, it helps you win going second a lot. And you have a lot of free pitches for it in this deck, so it's really good. Sometimes it even lets you like pitch a Rhino in your hand that would have been dead otherwise if you have two Rhinos. Then Foolish, one for one. These are the only other spells. Like, they're basically also just monsters. Like, the, deck, the whole deck is almost monsters, except Twister. And then the hand traps. And then I played one single trap. It is a D barrier because I only have one, and I also don't ever want to draw more than one. So I figured if I only play one, I'm never going to draw two, right? So it should help me a little bit versus Max C when they open it. And it's just a good card. Like, I don't know. This was previously the third Harmon deck. I don't really feel like it, that's necessary, though. I cited it out a lot. Yeah. Would you make any change to the main deck or anything um, flowed? This could be like a couple of things. It could be like a Regeki, a Book of Moon, or Third Harmonic. I don't really, it's not a big difference, so I think this was the best choice. Cool. Side or extra you choose? Extra first. Three Dante, best card. Mill three, add back. It's so good. Beatrice, all another best card. This is like your ideal first turn thing. That's all, all you need. You just set that up and then you can kill them next turn. Pilgrim off Beatrice. Two Leviers. Oops, sorry. It's really important because you can reborn Decatron, so you banish Decatron with your Infernoids and then use your BS to make Levier. So then you do Decatron some more and just kill them like that. And you put more Infernoids in your graveyard at the same time. I've seen people be like, one of this? No, you need two of this. I make two a lot. Um, Omega, you make it with Petrulia and a level 4 Harmadec, or like a level 5, I mean level 4 Decatron. And then, or you could do like a level 5 Decatron and a Harmadec. And then Virgil, this is for D Barrier. 
it's pretty good because it's still a BA, so I can like pitch BAs from my hand and then still summon more. Even if they flip deeper, like it's still good to get your value off a of graph, you know. Uh, F0, this card's really good. There's a combo you can do with Setsimus. You can uh, summon this and Setsimus and then steal their monster with this and then attack with both and then tribute the monster with Setsimus and then you could even banish the same monster if you want. But basically it's like Kaijuing something without actually Kaijuing it. And then you can use Setsimus' effect too after that. It's really, really good with Setsimus especially because you can tribute on your either player's turn with Setsimus. Um, Engineer, it's good for when I get cherried. And I made it once today. It wasn't even because I got cherry, just because I had like no Beatrice play. But I just like put a far funder and then use it on your opponent's turn. It's like having a Beatrice, you know. It's just a good defensive card, turn one, you know. Break sword, it gets rid of stuff like Dark Law and some back rows. Uh, this card is more important than the next card I'm about to show. Like the next card, I wouldn't even play it, honestly, if I had like some other stuff. I, I, I don't know. I just don't have like a 15th extra deck card, honestly. This card's great, though. I played Grand Pulse, I don't know. I didn't, I made it one time today, but it's really not needed because you can just Levier and Reborn Decatron and use that to pop a Spell Trap a lot of the time, but sometimes it comes up when you don't have it in your deck anymore, but honestly, this could be a lot of other shit. I just don't know. Would you play a second Break Sword? Uh, no, no. I wouldn't, I never need two of okay. that card because of the same reason, but it's more useful because it gets over Floodgates better. Like shit, like, um, stuff like Dark Law, you know. Uh, I played Charge Warrior. This is for the Triad Dice because if you, if I go like, Teratop to Kettenberg and they debury me and I didn't expect it, I'll be like, okay, trade to Kettenberg for Triad Dice and then I can only summon wins, but this is a win. So I can summon this, draw a card, and then I have defense and I have the Triad Dice in my grave that can buckle and attack. So it's like good for when your opponent flips D barrier or maybe like Flying C if I didn't expect it. Of course, I didn't get Flying C today, but it's just paranoid stuff. I learned this like a while ago back when people were hating on my deck more. Then ABC Buster, it's a cherry star good. Makes sense. All right, side deck. Side deck. Three anti spell. You see, I, I play no traps in the main deck, but I play a ton of traps in my side deck because I think people are gonna see my main deck and be like, oh, he plays no traps, I'll take out my twisters. But I play all the traps in the side, so then they take them out and I've just got anti spell <laughs> and they have no out. It's pretty good sometimes. That's pretty smart. And then three typhoons because, like I said, I worry about metal flows a lot. This is how you win against I'm going second. You just hit like the last scale, especially like when they put Bismagear and they have the other one. When they put Bismagear, it usually means they're second to last one. So you can just hit the, the other scale besides Bismagear and then sometimes they can't play like that, you know? And then um, two sphere modes, it's like a out. I was worried about DDD because it was looking really popular coming in, but it, it really didn't show up. Like, it's just good versus DDD because you can tribute over their Vanity's Fiend. That's what I was worried about. I didn't want to play Kaiju or Lava Golem because Vanity's Fiend, you can't special. And this will be good for Zodiac too. I wanted to pick these up mostly because I'm going to worry about it for Zodiac form because people will summon three a lot when this is going to be relevant with Zodiac, you know. And then two strikes. I was playing three before, but I made room for the sphere mode, so I just played two. Three cherries. I don't know why people are off this card. I think it's still really good. Like, it, banishing your opponent's crucial extra deck monster is a really good way to stop them from making as good plays as they could have. Going second. It's all about going second in Yu Gi Oh! Like, going first, you can win anything, honestly. As long as it's, like, halfway decent. And then the other cherries targets. I was playing another cherries target before, but I cut it for. Uh, the, uh, the sphere mode, you know, but I play the toad for the paleos and also the toad heroes and the hero because I mean I don't think this deck's that good, but it's like this is the best card against my deck So I have to it's like what I worry about the most cause I can't even decatron this thing I have to harmony or answer it That's it. Right, any shout outs? Um, shout outs to Versus in Las Vegas pretty awesome store Shout outs to Team Golden Age for taking good care of me once I came over here from NorCal and of course shout outs to everyone from NorCal I miss you guys. It's been a while, but I'm back and forth there, you know, still, but I live in Vegas now. That's it. Awesome. Congrats, man. Yeah.